You may have seen some of my videos showing high power rocket launches at some of the events that I've been to. Many of you have probably also flown low power Estes rockets. So you have an idea of what model rocketry is all about. But what makes a high power rocket different from an Estes model rocket? That's what I'm hoping to show you over the next few videos here as I build the Wild Mandrago kit. This is a pretty typical high power rocket kit and so I'm excited to show you what it's all about. In this first video I just want to show you what comes in the box. These are all the pieces that will make the airframe for the Drago kit. In a smaller rocket, such as an Estes rocket, you'll find items such as motor retention, parachute, shock cord, even decals. As you can see, none of that is included in the Wildman kit. That's up to you to decide how to attach the shock cord or the harnesses, uh, what type of parachute you want to get, what kind of electronics you want to use for recovery, if any, and how to secure your motor. Taking a look at the parts that come in the kit here, we have the uh, booster tube. This tube is made out of fiberglass, as are all of the tubes here, and it's already slotted for three fins. Here are the fins down here. These are fiberglass as well. They're 3 16 of an inch thick, and they're very strong. They're also pre-beveled by a wild man, which will make assembly much easier than having to use wooden fins and beveling them yourself. Next up, we get to the payload tube. This will be the upper section of the rocket. This is going to house the, the main parachute. This is the electronics bay right here. And this is the vent band that will go on the electronics bay. This is where I'm going to house my altimeters, which will re control recovery deployment. This tube here is the motor mount tube. It's 75 millimeters in diameter, so I can run a motor up to 75 millimeters in diameter in this rocket. With an adapter, I can also run smaller motors, and that's what I'm planning on doing at first. In this section here we have the fiberglass nose cone and we have the uh, nose cone coupler that will be glued into the nose cone. Additionally we have bulkheads for the payload bay, centering rings, and the nose cone bulkhead. We also have a hardware bag for attaching the recovery harnesses. Here's a close-up of the fins. These are 3 16 of an inch thick G10 fiberglass. As you can see they're already beveled. You can also see a couple uh, uh, watermarks on here. That's because I already washed all of these fiberglass pieces. When you get a fiberglass kit like that, this, the pieces have mold release agent on them and so it's important to take them to your sink and wash them with uh, dish soap. Here's the nose cone. As you can see it's hollow and you can even run a main parachute inside the nose cone if you want to run what's called head-in deployment. I won't be uh, running the rocket this way, I'll be setting it up as a standard dual deploy. Centering rings are located here. These are going to go on the motor mount. And this is the nose cone bulkhead. There's a hole pre-drilled right here. That's going to be for the eye bolt, which will attach the recovery harness. 